Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 24, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today in Diaries, we got a post from Boyan regarding how to test your TLS configuration. Of course, uh, that always has been sort of some of these canaries. I think if your TLS configuration isn't sort of close to up to date, then probably you're doing a bunch of other things wrong. Now, Boyan also has a nice webcast coming. In his webcast, he'll actually demonstrate some of these Poodle vulnerabilities, for example. And that's, I think, something that's often missing here, where we are talking about these vulnerabilities. We are claiming that they're severe, but hardly anybody sort of ever has gone through an actual exploit of one of these vulnerabilities. And over the last two days, Apple, again, pretty much updated everything, starting on Monday with their operating systems, Mac OS, Apple TV OS, uh, Watch OS, and iOS and on Tuesday with updates for some Windows software like iCloud for Windows and iTunes. Probably the highest profile vulnerability being addressed here was an issue in the walkie talkie feature in the Apple Watch. And that's actually something that Apple even disabled prior to this update being released. Now, in this update in the security notes, uh, there is a brief description of this that says a logic issue existed in the answering of phone calls. The issue was addressed with improved state management. So apparently if someone called you and also did initiate a walkie-talkie connection at the same time, they may be able to eavesdrop on you without you realizing that this walkie-talkie connection was established. The bulk of the vulnerabilities addressed are again in WebKit, but a couple other noteworthy ones. There is a remote code execution vulnerability in FaceTime and also a remote code execution vulnerability in Bluetooth, which are both kind of interesting. Don't really see them exploited much, but this would be sort of the tool, the vulnerability, one of the more advanced kind of exploits would be targeting. So in short, apply these updates as you get the time for it. I don't see anything hyper urgent here, given that the walkie-talkie feature is disabled unless you update. And given some ongoing attacks against network-based storage devices, I've mentioned them a couple times in the past, both QNAP and Synology are promoting more secure configurations of their devices. QNAP has a somewhat extensive sort of list of things that you can do with Synology. I was only able to see a Facebook post that they came up with that's a little bit brief and I've only seen the German version, but of course there may be an English version out there as well. My recommendation remains to not expose these devices at all if you can help it. And it's about two months since Microsoft patched CVE 2019-07-08, the famous RDP vulnerability that's also known as Blue Keep. Now, since then, there is a lot of talk about you know, how this could develop to a potential new super bug, how there is still 800,000 systems out there vulnerable. And certainly I am quite concerned about this vulnerability. And a lot of people are asking, well, uh, why don't don't we see more exploits for this vulnerability? So far, only a lot of tweets about uh, people who did develop exploits that appear to be working at least against Windows XP, somewhat reliable, but not much public. Well, uh, this changed last night and a researcher did publish on GitHub a write-up with a fairly in-depth technical analysis of the Blue Keep vulnerability, including details as to how to potentially exploit it. 
Now this write-up also focuses on Witness XP, which appears to be the most likely target here and states that Windows 7 and Server 2008, which are also vulnerable, are less likely going to be susceptible to code execution, but more likely going to just crash if they're hit with an exploit. My takeaway from this write-up is actually that we are unlikely going to see a worm in particular affecting Windows 7 or Windows 2008. Uh, using this vulnerability it just doesn't appear to be stable enough to be vulnerable. Now Windows XP, that may still be a different issue, but haven't really seen any statistics as to how many of the exposed vulnerable systems are actually running Windows XP. As far as Windows 7 goes, remember end of life for Windows 7 will be coming January. So you have less than half a year to really get off Windows 7 and upgrade uh, after January. There will be no more public free security patches for Windows 7. So probably best to just move on to Windows 10. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.